Thank you, um, party president, party secretary, party leader, chair of nomination committee, fellow candidates, media, and everybody who's here today. Um, you know, one thing parliamentary leader said um, today, uh, the work that I did for 20 years and the pain of 2000 civil unrest, every time there's a political coup, something happens, an election happens, we get divided by ethnicity. And some of us, our hearts have bled and we've tried to make it one country, one nation. And I'd like to salute NFP's motto, one country, one nation. And this is the attraction for most of us. So let's give a hand to the visionaries on NFP who have thought this and are working towards that. Now for many months now, I've been asked to stand for elections. For many years, I've been asked to stand for elections. I was quite resolute that I would not. My path looked very clear to me. I wanted to continue developing interventions to support those in need on the ground. I've been very blessed with the trust of many people who have helped me grow the dream of reaching those in need. This led to the founding of FRIEND, the organization I've worked for the, for the last 21 years, and which I resigned from yesterday to join this party. My next project was in my dreams, a care facility in the Western Division for the many neglected senior citizens and people living with disabilities. So every time party leader or somebody will tell me, you know, it's time for you to take national leadership, and I would say, no, no, that's my focus. However, last Sunday, I, I made a decision to stand for elections under the NFP banner. It was, was not an easy decision for somebody who was like, I'll never join politics. I have watched Fiji politics for the last few years and the way opposition, politicians and other dissenting voices are treated by this government. They are personally attacked, harassed and victimized. Opposition politics is not an easy part for those who choose it. And I commend everybody here who have chosen it because we don't know. We know what our party leaders going through, any, or any one of us can. But the stark realities of people on the ground and the lack of access to basic needs has made me wonder how we manage, how do we change the status quo? Water infrastructure seems to have collapsed. Some people in urban centers are able to raise their complaints through the news media to make their voices heard and get some action. Ma many in squatter settlements and rural areas suffer silently. Resource owners like people of Ambada village and Lotoka drink untreated water, even while their land is leased by Water Authority of Fiji and their water resource is used for the people of, of Lotoka. This is one example of so many when you travel the rural areas, and I'm sure the candidates here have seen that again and again. We all know our hospital system has collapsed, it's poorly resourced, and some facilities are so poorly maintained that they're not even fit to be occupied. Almost on a daily basis, I see requests for food by those impacted by NCDs and, and you know, different NCDs, including strokes. Amputees need support and mobility aid, but there is no national facility for them to get this service or support. Basic medicines are not available for people who suffer from chronic health conditions. Many people in the West have lost their homes to termites. There is no help for them to rebuild. We don't even hear that in the national conversation. And we have all seen the patchwork fixes on our roads each year, year in, year out, at great expense to taxpayers with little overall improvement. You know, I've been involved in um, cyclone relief for a long time, but since friends started in 2003 with Cyclone Amy in Lambasa, we will have to pack up and go and reach out to the people when they need. Each cyclone season, I've seen devastation. I'm sure we all have seen devastation. But every season, we fail to pro properly prepare. There never seems to be stock of relief items. 
made ready before cyclones. Only endless assessments afterwards. Uh, people are supposed to take shelter in schools as evacuation centers. Yet none of these facilities have engineer's certificate. Schools don't receive enough support to build proper facilities. Year in, year out, the same reports about the need to change disaster responses are written, but as soon as the disaster ends, the reports are filed away. The following year, we hear the same things again and again. National Nutrition Survey, even before COVID, indicated high levels of malnutrition in children. It's not hard to grow our own food, nutritious food in our soils and in our tropical climate. Why then is anyone malnourished in this country? Even boarding, every boarding school, and many of the families whose children are in boarding schools know that very poor quality, highly processed foods are provided for our children. As I've worked for the people, with the people, on the ground for the last 25 years, I've learned how we can find resources to support the needs of the poorest people using the power of self-help and partnerships within the community. I have realized if there is a will to serve, we can find a way. So why, over the years, do we continue to have huge problems with poverty, poor health, poor housing, and lack of basic facilities? What have our leaders been doing? Do they have the will to really serve our people? If they did, would Fiji be in the state we are in today? Why? Why? When each time our leaders talk about any development, can they only talk about spending millions of dollars and increasing the government's already high debt burden? I do not understand the attitude of the Fiji First Government. When we've asked to cooperate, the leaders only want to compete and dominate. Even NGOs are seen as their political rivals when we are there to fill in the gaps that they are not able to serve, and they consider us threats to their votes. I have found that in life it is so much easier to work in peace and harmony with others, not to compete with and attack them. Why can we not put this as a simple rule into place in our national life? The final factor for my decision was watching the government's recent attacks on opposition leaders and others who challenged them. People like Professor Biman Prasad and others prepared to sacrifice huge income to join public life and help to rebuild this country. But instead of being consulted, appreciated, and brought into national decision making, they are attacked and harassed. The first step in rebuilding our country is to win back, win it back from dictatorship. We need our country back. Only then we can mobilize all our resources, government money, skills, experience, talents of our own people to begin the real work. My own experience is in getting people into sustainable livelihoods through rural development and agriculture support. I believe that many of the things that we have done on a small scale can be scaled up. All we need is the willingness to be humble, understand people's needs, and commit to work together. The rule enforced in the organization I worked for for the last 20 years is that we never ask for anything in return for the help we provide, ever. So I've also had the dilemma and a personal problem now of asking people to give me their vote. <laughs> but looking at the way Fiji is governed, the waste of resources and the loss of so many opportunities, I do not believe that our community leaders have a choice now. We have to speak up and we have to stand up. We have to join party politics. We cannot stay out. Yeah, right. yeah. We need to save the country from the current government. Each community has a huge capacity to solve its own problems, as we see every day when the needs are not met. We need a government that can mobilize and support them to do this, not try to dominate them and dictate to them and rule by fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is why I have reluctantly decided to join national politics. But I believe that NFP and its leaders like Professor Biman Prasad, Sir Pio Tikonduandua, Lenora Gerengirentambua, Saini Numbo, and others in its leadership are people I can work with. 
to achieve my ambition for, for Fiji and its people. And I hope with my track record, I ask you to have faith in me and the party for us to be able to the, achieve the dream of one nation, one country, one nation. I hope that you will trust us in being able to deliver what people need. And I thank you for, having, uh, be, for being here and I thank you for opening our hearts and your homes as the party leader has asked so that we could come and share with you what our vision for Fiji is. Thank you. Naka.